Loose is the operative word, Matthew, when you talk about V8 Utes. They've been off, George, for 10 weeks. Uh, there's plenty of pent-up aggression. I've got a feeling it may be let out in this first race. Yeah, I know. These guys have been looking forward to getting back in the cars for sure. And a place like this, you know, big straights, big braking zones, and especially with that super fast section over the top down to, down to uh, Dandenong Road, we're going to see a lot. Really big field, 31 cars, all the standard operators of the V8 Ute Series as we get set for what is a busy second half of the year where they're at all the marquee events, Sandown, Bathurst, the Gold Coast, the Sydney 500. So it's a very busy back end of the championship after quite a big mid-season break. Yeah, exactly. Flag at the back. So after a little bit of a mid-season break, the Ute boys are back and ready to go. Full field at Sandown, round five, race one of the championship. Ford and Holden, front row. A couple of Fords on the second row. Can Nathan Pretty defend the honour? Car stalled on the grid. That's Jesse Dixon, who has gone nowhere. Now he gets it going, but he will be down the rear of the grid. Long run to turn one. Pretty leads. Walton next. Stephen White's made a great jump. Oh. Off the road goes Elliot Barber. There's more going around. Kim Jane backwards in the dirt there. And Elliot will sneak out back into the traffic. He's got to be careful on the rejoin. And the top two are clearing away. The rest are warring amongst themselves. On it, it's easy to trip over. Have oh. a look at this. Reese McNally trying to get down the inside for a three-way run. Vintage Dave Ute Cedars. racing. Yeah, this is good stuff. David Cedars is in the middle. And can the Ford oh. keep up with the Holden Grum? We've got a lot of bit of side draft going on here. Yeah. Looks like McNally's going to capitalise and actually take a couple of spots out of this. Three to one. Normally doesn't work. Cedars, though, goes deep on the brakes. Makes it around the turn up, again. but Barbara is bush bashing. Just because there's some new sand out there doesn't mean he has to go and use it. Really, really good, strong early start to the race, and he's, he's looking quite menacing on the back of Chris Walton. And Stephen White comes from a, a race win in the last round at Townsville, where Nathan Pretty won the last race. White's forcing the issue down the inside line. Both of them are burning. He will not stop this properly, or will he? He does, but he's wide at turn one. Walton's back down the inside, but you wouldn't mind betting he's just barbecued those front tyres. Yeah, he got away with that. I'd like to see how they're going to put up with it after the last little while, but, you know, he still he had speed. I'm still uh, putting a bet on him to uh, to keep maintaining that pressure on Chris uh, throughout the rest of the race. And look who's going with them. Ryan Hansford in the number six Ford is just closing on in, of course, the son of the lake. I'd like to see what happens up here. You know, there's going to be a lot of action, a lot of cars coming into a small amount of space, lockups everywhere. There goes, there goes Elliot off to the outside. The grass. This is another angle from head on. Just went in by himself too deep. There's Kim Jane. Kim Jane got contact Gero with Gray. Jeremy Gray. Now that is the absolutely environmental car, but it doesn't need to go to the environment scenery too much. And Kimbo's coming off a couple of pretty no. good results, you know. He's definitely uh, Hansford's on the move. He's got by Stephen White. He's through to third. Or is he? Or is he? White's got some more pace. He's trying to sneak across and cover the line, but Hansford's in the gap. So P3 for the truck line forward. Stephen White will be pretty ginger on those brakes after having flat spot the tyres earlier on on that last lap. So it would have been a nice, uh, nice smart move for Hansford to make a move there because he knows that Stephen would have been thinking about those tyres. Look back here. It's all about run off this final turn. Oh, Gary, Gary Baxter, Baxter. Baxter. He's gone around. There's contact there. Armin gets together with Wayne Wakefield. Buddy Ford is now parked. You do not want to He's be got there. to wait. He can't get going because the field just keeps on coming. That's the downside of having... 31 cars on the grid and such a strong championship and he'd actually qualified really well ninth remember that Wayne former Dunlop series driver in V8 supercars and saw the Pertex on the background he did drive the Pertex forward with Marcus Ambrose at Bathurst back in 2000 the action continues the Auto 1 V8 Ute series it's round five race one here in Melbourne and there is Ryle Harris he sits P5 up front Chris Walton is a go and a hunt and he's catching Nathan Pretty, he's got the margin down to three tenths of a second, but the worry for Walton is that Ryan Hansford's going with him as well. Exactly right. Ryan Hansford, while we've been away, has actually set a brand new lap record at this circuit. Actually, uh, he's not the only one, is he? Uh, by my count, 19 cars are under the lap record. <laughs> we weren't here last year. The Ute guys have stepped it up this year, and this is the fight at the front. Nathan Pretty, the former Bathurst 24-hour winner, and of course, long-time V8 supercar Enduro signing for so many teams. A, a favoured son at Holden over the years, but he's defending the honour at the moment because he's got a pack of Fords. Walton and Hansford are teammates. I reckon they won't act like it, though, if there's a win on the line. Yeah. Cedars right with him, then Adam Marjoram, then Reese McNally, 
Elliot Barber and Michael Armand round out the 10. But this is where it's at. Walton has proven in the past, George, that he is not afraid to use the bumper. Not afraid to use the bumper. Not afraid to smash a curb is uh, Mr. Excitement, Chris Walton. So, no, he's, uh, if, if there's a, a sniff of a move, he's going to make it, that's for sure. We've had a great season in the Ute so far. Seven different race winners from 13 races. Three different round winners from the four held so far. We're at the halfway mark of the championship. And look at the ground he makes at the end of the back game. straight. Up over the curves. These things really do climb. Oh, now he's going to lunge. Pretty will have to play this smart handsman. Stance to gain from both of them. He left pretty wide. He got a slow run himself. And now the two teammates will fight. But Hansford oh, he's a gear. has got them both. Walton loses speed. Pretty's back to second. And it's all changed around. I'd be worried if I was this, oh, these two. You know, look it's, out. Oh. Now it's, it's on. not over. It's not over. And that lets Hansford off the hook. Look at the margin that he's just got in an instant. This is the man who's just set a new lap record here, so I'd be very wary of letting uh, uh, Ryan Hansford get any clear. We're on our last lap here now at Sandown, and Ryan Hansford has won in the series before. Last time was at Darwin, halfway through last year. He picked up a race win up there, so he played it perfectly. He let the other two box one another in the mouth and then drove straight past them. Well, it's nice. Not often you can say the fastest cars won the race in, the, in a value race. Sometimes. Sometimes we get to obviously get big fights happening and all sort of thing, but Ryan has done a fantastic job so far this race, and, and on his last lap, you know, we've got a lap record uh, in the books, and, and through pace, Ryan Hansford's done exactly what we expected as soon as he got let loose. And how is this? 25 years ago, his dad, Greg, teamed with Alan Moffat to win Alan's last race on Aussie soil in the Sandown 500. So fast forward 25 years, and Hansford is on top at Sandown again. Ryan Hansford picks up the win from Nathan Pretty. Walton third, then Steve's lead in Portland. We'll bring you another race from the Utes tomorrow, but we got a fair bit of action for our money's worth then. That's exactly right. That, that's vintage Ute racing. That was a great race. Saw a couple of guys get spun out, which is uh, uh, unfortunate, but also some uh, some epic side-by-side -side battles. We've got the mix too. Five forwards and five Commodores in the top ten for race one. Michael Armand rounds out the ten. Not a bad way to make awesome his V8 debut. Ute debut. It has been a big day so 